Muchachos, e muchachas, what's going on, guys? I know it's been two months. I've been gone. I've been absent. I haven't been posting. And I wanted to just make a dedicated video just talking about that, along with some life updates and some updates for what's to come. So, first, let me start off by introducing myself because I know I've got some new subscribers. Hello and welcome. First of all, my name is Natalie Denise. I love doing deep dives here on this channel. Sometimes I'll do some commentary videos, but um, deep dives are my passion. I love doing the research and you know looking in the corners and crevices of the internet for information. Uh, but I especially love the deep dives that are so impactful uh, to your lives, and which is why you know we did this recent report about the National Human Trafficking Hotline. Uh, but before I kind of get into that, I'll explain my other parts. So also, I am a 10 year outreach. How do I? Uh, I've been in the outreach ministry industry, I guess, of anti human trafficking for the past 10 years. So I've done different things uh, in different respects, such as, you know, outreach on the streets and cantinas, uh, uh, safe house visits and mentorship for survivors, uh, and border. So I've seen a lot, experienced a lot, talked to a lot of people, seen a lot of things. And so I love, I absolutely love, I love this area where I'm combining those passions of, you know, education in that area of, you know, combating human trafficking, as well as, you know, again, just, just these discovery pieces like the Polaris Project, National Human Trafficking Hotline. So that's who I am. And so why I have been gone for the past two months is precisely uh, the, the clue you may have received yesterday. I have been working on bringing this project to the finish line, the National Human Trafficking Hotline. My team and I uh, at Counter Trafficking Alliance, my organization, we have been working on this research for two years, two years, long years, right? And I, and I said this kind of explained it briefly in the part one of that video or the part one of that project. I will be par posting part two, by the way, very soon. But I explained a little bit that, you know, we were just, me and my team were mounted with so much data and information that we didn't even know where to start. And we knew where to start. We knew to where to look. Some of the things we didn't even know how to look at, like 990s, we didn't know how to piece together relationships. So we just really, we needed to take our time to just look at this information very, very intricately. And that's what we did for the past two years. That's how big this project was. So if you guys, if you have not seen part one of the National Human Trafficking Hotline, part one, uh, please go watch it. Uh, we dedicated a lot of time. There's a lot of information in there. And again, this stuff is very impactful because somebody will be somebody will be affected by this hotline, right? And uh, we don't we hope that it's not negatively, but we've seen a lot more of negative outcomes than we have positive. And what else? So part of that organization is to do just that, to watchdog and to vet organizations that say that they're helping human trafficking victims and survivors with resources. And uh, there's really nothing illustrative to show for it. So we're going to continue doing that. We love doing it. I mean, we got our first bat with with that. And, and it, it's a pretty monumental project. It's a milestone for us. And we want to do more. We want to keep this industry honest, right? And it's really up to the organizations whether or not they want to rectify their operations or actions and you know all these things but uh, if there's anything we can do to bring light to these troubling elements we will another part of our organization at counter trafficking alliance will be to actually help victims the the reason why it's been taking us so long is because we want to do this right and in order for us to do do it right bringing it full circle, we had to understand the industry as it stood. And that meant looking at a gargantuan organization like Polaris Project to understand where the heck resources could be going to, if they're even giving resources to these survivors, how often, you know, all of these different factors, right? These are big questions we initially came to the table with. And so we had to understand 
where exactly we needed to shoe in, where we needed to step in, right? And we learned that there's a lot of areas we need to step into, right? And so that's that's what's been taking us so long is to this big understanding of the industry first. And we believe me, we want to do this right. We'd rather plan and do this right before we just, you know, went fast and 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 didn't have control or didn't have an idea of of what we were doing. So I, I believe that God guided us in the right on the right path. With that being said, so the other part of our organization is helping human trafficking victims. And the way that we're doing that with our next phase is by constructing and engineering a sustainable system that will catalog these needs. And then thus will we will open up these, you know, opportunities for you, the public, to help out. Uh, and the idea is that there might be uh, ABC ministry in, I don't know, uh, let's just say New Mexico that needs groceries or they need they need a, a, a hand, a helping hand uh, with picking up branches or, you know, I'm just ma- naming scenarios, but we don't know what these opportunities are unless we catalog them, unless we ask. So that is what we're working on in our next phase. So if you have put in a volunteer application, thank you for your patience. I know it's been a while. I know it has, uh, but we are working on it. We're a very, very, very small team. We have, uh, it's not that we, we haven't had, you know, trouble finding that. It's the fact that we need to use our time and resources and uh, actually apply uh, all of this time and resources to actually vet our volunteers and to find where the talent is, who would be good at what and, you know, placing them. And really, uh, truly, honestly, I'm being completely transparent. We have allocated most of our time to the research of the Polaris Project National Human Trafficking Hotline. So now that that is uh, coming to the finish line, Like I said, part two will be put out soon. Once that is out, I can fully dedicate a lot more time. My team is already working on vetting volunteers, but me, myself, as the leader, I'll be able to uh, fully dedicate myself in the next phase as well. So I'm very excited for that because, again, this is just something we carefully need to build out. There's no blueprint for it, and we believe that nobody has done what we are going to do. So we we very carefully want to plan this. We don't want to rush and, you know, um, do it. We don't want to do it wrong, I, I guess is like for the lack of better words, uh, we, we want to do this as carefully as possible. So anyway, so that acts, that's the next phase. And that's, that's also something that we've been working on, uh, on our, on our time with, uh, dedicating towards the organization. Um, so I want to get back, I want to get back to deep dives as well. I miss it. I miss, uh, creating those deep dives. It's actually therapeutic for me. I mean, I, I love doing it. That's like my passion to deep dive and find the corruption and make these content pieces, uh, for you guys to know about it too. So I will get, uh, I will be doing that more regularly now. So that brings me to the update of this channel, right? So I know that I've had a mixed bag on this channel. It's been a lot of deep dives. It's been a lot of commentary, pop culture commentary and all these things, discoveries, but I've also had, you know, some faith based content I started dipping in and I don't want to stop doing that. However, I do believe that I need to house that on a different channel. So I will be doing um, faith-based content and real life content on Natalie IRL. I will link it in my description below, as well as if I can link it in one of these, um, you know, cards or wherever, or at the end of this video, uh, I will. So I will be moving my faith-based content and my real life content on another channel. And I know I don't really, I don't really do like vlogs or real life content a lot on this channel, but I think like once in a while it'd be nice to just, you know, bring you guys along with me with some cool events that I do and you know, what that looks like behind the scenes and stuff like that. So uh, I will be putting all the Natalie IRL faith-based vlogs and stuff on Natalie IRL. Okay, so you guys can go follow that if you're interested. And uh, I'm very excited about that project too, because I, I just feel like on this channel, it I, I know that I, I have an audience that is so evergreen. You guys uh, are you know, pretty fluid with my content and w- what I have to say, but 
I know the roots of this channel and that is deep dives. So I want to get back to that uh, more concentrated. And I think the faith base uh, will do very well on a, in a different house, in a different little apartment. So I'm very excited for that. Uh, what else? As far as uh, life updates, I had to, uh, this is, has been one of the hardest last few weeks for me. I had to make the saddest decision and uh, I, I had to say goodbye to Mr. Bo. Uh, for, for those of you who have been longtime watchers of this channel, you guys know Bo. He uh, has been my baby for the past 13 years. He would have been 14 in December. He had um, a lot of failing components of his health um, going on and uh, oh, I knew I couldn't do it without crying oh. okay so Bo was already an elder he was 13 years old and he would have been 14 in December he had a lot of failing components of his health uh, you know his his joints were all going out. Uh, he finally, uh, you know, had a lot of things going on with his hips, uh, some displacement. And, you know, he was he ultimately, thank God, it, he didn't show signs of pain. Um, you know, in his last days, it was really like one day that it was just like everything kind of unraveled all at once for him. And uh, then it, it, it was like, it was like all in one day where I, I realized like, wow, his health is like spiraling. Um, and so he couldn't hold his bladder. Uh, he could d barely hold his, you know, his poopoos. And uh, he had a, a very, very much trouble walking uh, his last two days. So, um, you know, that that day that everything kind of just spiraled. It was like a Monday. I'll never forget it. Everything just kind of happened all at once. Took him to the vet. Uh, they basically said, uh, you know, it's his, it's his, his joints, right? His, his knees, his dog knees and his hips that basically he would need replacements and they would cost about 10 to $15,000 per limb and they were like, you know, it's going to be a hard surgery. It's a lot of recovery. And it's like, you know, uh, that that's the hard part is, um, of course, now, now, first of all, OK, let me just get out the 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 first part. I definitely don't have ten to fifteen thousand dollars to blow like that. Um, but also, you know, Bo being an elder, he was an elderly dog already. Uh, he had just uh, had surgery. It was like a dental surgery uh, just months before. And so he had already gone under. And I, it, it's just like all of these components just kind of lead you into this alignment of it is his time. And uh, you've had a long time with him. And I had a long time with him and um, it was his time to go. So I had to say goodbye. To That's the life update, guys. It's been uh, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, but I um, I am optimistic as hard of, as it is to say right now. So, yeah, guys, it's been um, it's been a pretty rough few weeks. But, you know, I, I know that uh, God is bringing me to a place and maybe Bo had, you know, it was his time. He was, he was at his full life. You know, he lived to 90, almost 98 years old in, in doggy years. Uh, and, uh, I, I do believe that God has something around the corner for me. I don't know what that is. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but anyway, um, it's been hard, but I, I am excited to get back to, um, my passions, fully and uh yeah we'll see what 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 <laughs> we have in store for you so anyway just wanted to provide that update for you guys i love you so much and um i'm gonna go take a walk <laughs> bye